this week is about truth. There's a shortage of truth in the world, and people are looking and searching for truth. And uh, we know that you will appreciate a sense of truth in all that we do and all that is occurring in our lives. We're still about a minute away. Uh, I hope you all are taking care of each other. This week I've spoken to a number of you, I saw a number of you who were here for the grab and go uh, senior luncheon. And that was, a, that was good. I had, a, I had a ham sandwich that was really good and some baked chips and water. And uh, I just enjoyed seeing so many of you. And some people were teasing me because I had white shorts on after Labor Day. But you know what? I'm wearing my white shorts until it's no longer um, hot outside. So, oh well, so much for fashion rules. And this is the day that the Lord has made, so we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Um, talk to you all shortly. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Life is sometimes unfair, but God is good all the time. For everybody out there on Facebook, you just got a good panoramic view of the congregation and the church. You can see that a place that holds 1,400 has a grand total of nine people in it. So we are absolutely socially distanced. And it is good to be alive today. It is good to be in the land of the living and to know that God is still on the throne. The weather is beautiful. No need for heat, no need for air conditioning. Uh, just need to really enjoy ourselves and understand how good God is. Um, we, we've got a, a few different shots that you're going to see. Uh, Julie, I think the top of your head is actually in the shot that we've got right now. So if you just move to your right a bit there you go there you go good i see some things that others don't so that's the way it goes we're all in here together and it is a good team um we've got lauren thomas moyette christian brailsford and we've most importantly got the holy spirit and god so let's let's hear music now and just thank god for being alive today
Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. In service course with praise. He is worthy to be praised. Exalt his holy name. Glory and honor. Majesty and power. Come and let us shout, come and let us shout, come and let us shout to the Lord our God. Come and let us shout, come and let us shout, come and let us shout to the Lord our God. He is worthy to be praised, exalt his holy name. Glory and honor, majesty and power. Come and let us dance. Come and let us dance. Come and let us dance. Lift up holy hands. Come and let us dance. Come and let us dance. Come and let us dance. Lift up holy hands. Come and let us dance. Come and let us dance. Come and let us dance. Lift up holy hands. Whoa, let us sing. Whoa, let us sing. Oh, let us sing. Oh, let us sing. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. We, we know that we are having some slight technical issues right now with Facebook where people are hearing. Hold off your comments. If we know you like, we know you want to comment. But if you're getting feedback, we know you're out there. We'll see you out there. Just hold off your comments. We'll get through this. We are growing and evolving. And so if you just hold off your comments, I know you're saying amen. I know you're saying praise the Lord. I know you're saying Christian sing. I know you're saying Lauren, kill it. But we're, 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 we're moving forward, but we have challenges as well. So that's part of what life is. It's about growing pains. And we know that you all are an adaptive, creative people because that's who we are. And it's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Great to hear you, Christian. Great to hear you, Lauren. Uh, keep Dave Roberts and Wanda Roberts and Lindsay Roberts in prayer. Uh, they buried their aunt who functions as a mom for Dave and Wanda. And so uh, Dave and Wanda and Lindsay went down to South Carolina and funeralized uh, their their aunt on, and great aunt on, uh, on Thursday uh, down in Columbia, Columbia, South Carolina. She was a great soul. Uh, I always enjoyed when she was up here and would worship with us. And in the old days, she'd take a DVD back with her and she'd tell Dave, send some more, send some more. So our heart goes out to Claude and Dave and the rest of the family. Um, the Roberts family is a dear family to me, and so we know that we know that when you are mourning, we are also mourning. We had a fantastic time with seniors uh, later, uh, earlier in the week, or last week, since this is the first day of the week. Last week, all of our seniors were here, and um, not all, but many were here in a very safe way. They picked up their grab bags, they picked up lunch, they uh, spent some time yelling across the field at each other and yelling across the parking lot, but it was great to see familiar faces. And so we're learning to do everything as carefully as we possibly can. 
and that's what we have learned in all of this. We need to really care, C-A-R-E, that's a four-letter word. We need to care about each other. The other thing we need to do is we need another four-letter word. We need to wear our mask, M-A-S-K. Uh, the mask help to keep us, uh, keep us very safe. The other thing we need to do is T-E-S-T, -E another four-letter word. We need to test to make sure that we are safe, that we're keeping others safe. And then we need to do something really important on November 3rd. We need to V-O-T-E. We need to vote. We need to vote to make sure uh, that we have the kind of government that respects the body of Christ, that respects our people, and that is doing the things that are going to help to make us what we need to be and help us to be who we need to be in Jesus Christ. Um, we have a little more music today than we normally would uh, with Christian and Lauren here um, because we want to, I think we fixed the clicking sound that we were having, so you all can comment away. Anytime I say something that resonates with me, you can say amen, or if I should be quiet and end the sermon right there, just say, help him, Holy Ghost. <laughs> um, Lauren's here, Christian's here, they're going to spend some time with music, with worship. Uh, we're also glad to have City of Philadelphia City, Count, uh, City Council member. Uh, she, is a, she is a dear friend of mine, and she is somebody who has been monumentally important with respect to Black Doctors COVID-19 Consortium for the funding uh, for, that they've needed to serve our community. But Council Member Catherine Gilmore Richardson, who is in her first term, uh, she was, uh, she's only been in office and in service uh, since January, but she has really hit the ground running. And I have said to people for a long time that I think the next mayor of the city of Philadelphia ought to be a black woman. Uh, I think the men have had a chance to mess it up enough, and I think we ought to give a woman a chance to do it. And there are some fantastic African-American women who easily, easily can run the city better than the men can. So I'm, I'm hopeful that in Kathy's future, uh, there are higher and better aspirations I live in the city of Philadelphia. Our church is in Montgomery County, but the uh, majority of our members live in the city of Philadelphia. So I hope we are also keen about the people who will lead our city. We've got enormous issues. We've got the economy. We've got the schools. We've got housing. We've got a, 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 the city is, is dirtier now than I have ever seen it. Dirtier. Kensington, West Philadelphia, Center City. And so we really need leadership that understands what needs to happen. Otherwise, we are going to have a big price to pay. But I think there's some fantastic women out there. Sherelle Parker, I think Kathy is out there, Joanna McClinton, uh, Helen Jim is out there. I think there are a, a series of ladies who can lead this city, and I hope we are listening to them and paying attention. Um, I'm going to pray. Uh, e Eternal and almighty God, we thank you that you have brought us into your house. We invoke your name, God, because your name has power. And we know that if we call upon you, like a child who is hungry and seeks bread, that you will not give us a stone. Give us the bread of life, O oh God. And not just while we're in the midst of worship, but give us the bread of life when we're trying to figure out what we should do in our love lives while we're trying to figure out our finances. We ask eternal and almighty God that you would have your way in this worship service, but more importantly, have your way in our lives, in our business, in our relationships, in all that we do. We need you more now, God, than we have ever needed you because we are separated as the body of Christ from physical corporate worship, even if we are not separated because of the internet or the phone. We need your presence right now, Holy Spirit. We ask eternal and merciful God that you would just have your way. Be with us. And dwell with us. Open doors that no man, no woman can open for us and close doors, end chapters, close books, remove us from sin, separation and isolation. We 
pray these things in the power of Jesus' holy and awesome name. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I'm going to step off uh, out of the, the pulpit slash stage and just let you all have some fun with music and worship. And when you all finish, I'll figure out when you're ready and I'll take my cue and I'll come back in. So enjoy and worship God in spirit and truth.
As we continue to enter into this spirit of worship, I think of my family and the songs that we've sung, like the song Christian and I just did. Um, singing with my family is probably my greatest joy. And just a song comes to my spirit that if some of you um, are listening to contemporary, you'll recognize it, but then you'll also recognize a more traditional sense, like how my grandfather used to sing. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart, where sin runs deep, your grace is more, where grace is found, is where you are, where you are, Lord, I am free, holiness is Christ in me, Lord, I need you all, I need you, every hour, I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need My grandfather sang it like this. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need 
Hallelujah. And thank God. Thank God for your grandfather, Lauren. Thank mm -hmm. God. I need thee. Oh, I need thee Amen. every hour. We, we, we need each other more than ever, but we need God right now so deeply mm -hmm. uh, and so intentionally. And so I'm grateful to God that you took us back to church. Mm -hmm. That old stuff still works. Amen. Yeah. Was that your grandfather who I knew? Pop Holmes, Robert Holmes. Um, he was a deacon at Antioch. I'm not sure. Antioch out here? Antioch Baptist Church. Wow. Yep. Okay. Um, he passed, and a good, good friend of the family would come over and sing all worship songs. It, and he was, my mom was caring for him, and she would come to the house. Her name's Kathy, Miss Kathy. And she sang all of these hymns, a cappella. And he could barely breathe, but this was a song he was able to sing. Yeah. Beautiful uh, voice, a nice baritone voice. Don't let that <laughs> musical tradition leave us. Yeah. Uh, we are so quick to throw old things away, uh, but we still need those old things that work. And that does not mean that we become a slave to tradition, but we should be a slave unto Christ right. and, and to the music that we have, um, have learned in our faith through Jesus Christ. They still work. They still have power and have authority. Christian, it's always great to have you here. So, I got the uh, the I got the young heads in here today. But <laughs> you know, I hate to tell the young heads that they're quickly trending toward becoming old heads, right? When you yeah, okay, you can shake your head all you want, okay? Uh, you know that. how you know you're getting old when you have some young teenagers who say things like, "Oh, you remember back in the day music," <laughs> and they're talking about two years ago. So, that's starting to happen to you too. Whether you want, uh, okay, all right. <laughs> Coming soon to a calendar near you. Don't is, uh, don't don't get that don't get that twisted. I, I just want to look uh, today at a word of scripture from the Gospel of John, the 18th chapter, and we're grateful to have uh, Pastor Mark Tyler from Mother Bethel Amy Church. Uh, and in the comments, he said, "Vote." That's a good four-letter word. Uh, Mark has been a champion for our folks, and so we're great for, uh, grateful for grateful for. For Mark, I always joke with all the AMEs and the Adventists that they're they're frustrated Baptist, um, and so if they um, if they're joining us, that's just continued frustration. Take a look at the Gospel of John, the 18th chapter, verses 38, 39, and 40. I'm reading from the New International Version of the text, uh, and this is the way it reads: "What is truth?" retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, talking about Jesus. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. I'd like to preach this morning, and I'll discuss this text and deal with this text this week as well as next week. This morning's subject is, what is truth? Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather to worship. We thank you, God for allowing us to explore who you are in your word, in your deeds, and in your spirit. We pray now, oh God, that our hearts and our minds and ears would be receptive to your word and that you would dwell richly with us. Come now, Holy Spirit, let your Holy Spirit fall upon this preacher and upon these, your people, so that we will know that even though we didn't come to 2741 Woodland, that we've been to church. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. This question, what is truth, which is a retort from Pontius Pilate, uh, that Roman prefect 
and leader of Judea who did not want to serve according to history in Judea. It was not a great assignment in the Roman Empire because the Jewish people in Jerusalem had been full of rabble rousers and had been a tough place for people to operate. It was a place that had always been accused of sedition. It was a place that had been tumultuous and tempestuous the entire time that the Romans had occupied Judea. It was a problem. And he finds himself standing in judgment of Jesus Christ at the Passover, the Passover lamb, the Passover lamb at the Passover. And we find Pontius Pilate in a dialogue with Jesus Christ. And Jesus says to him in the 37th verse, he says, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And Pontius Pilate responds, what is truth? I'd like to raise that question in the form of a subject this morning at a time when lies are abounding in our country in a way greater than we have ever seen. It was one thing in the past to see the proclamation that we should have the access to life, liberty, and the pursuit of justice, that we've read and seen the words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, and even before that, the Articles of Confederation that seem to, to tip their, to, to bow their head to the idea that people will be free and enjoy individual liberty. It, but we had slavery for another 200 years almost in this country, from the founding of this country almost until the mid-1960s, where African Americans were not allowed to vote in all of the country, all of the states in the nation. And so we've had, we've had, we've had voice and piecemeal freedom and liberty. So we've become accustomed to those lies, but now we have lies that are abounding in high places where we even have the president and it has been exposed this week that he knew as early as January how dangerous the coronavirus was. And he said that to Bob Woodson in his, Bob Woodward, Woodard in his, uh, Bob Woodward in his most recent book, that he simply admitted that he knew how dangerous this was, but he still failed to protect the people in whose charge he had been left. Lies are abounding in our country right now. We see even a mad dash to get to a vaccine, and we find it hard to believe the science. We find it even harder to believe the politics, and even sometimes we find it harder to believe people in religious places of authority, as we've seen the president of Liberty University topple Jerry Falwell the son of the founder of the moral majority and the son of the founder of Liberty University, it is hard to figure out who is telling the truth. But this is not a new problem. Pontius Pilate, 2,000 years ago, raised that profound question when he simply asked, what is truth? When we cannot look to government and religious leaders or heads of civil rights organizations and expect them to give us the truth because so many people are seeking their way. We see that there is a significant compromise of the truth and wherever there is no longer truth, we find ourselves in a place where we will not be able to enjoy all of our freedoms or enjoy the, the totality of our faith and religion. When there is no truth, we find ourselves trapped we find ourselves undermined, and so we ask that same question that Pontius Pilate found himself asking 2,000 years ago, what is truth? Truth is not convenient. Truth is not cheap. Truth is not something that we can make up on the fly. Truth is even greater than facts because truth is what makes us free. And the greatest truth we have is that Jesus Christ loved us so much and that he came into the world to free the captive so that we enjoy a life of truth and freedom and liberty in Jesus Christ. And that's why when Lauren was singing, we need you right now, God. We need thee because there is so much lie in the world. There are so many sins in the world. There is so much 
misgiving in the world that we need the truth of God and we cannot find the truth of God in men or women. We cannot find the truth of God in our salaries or our jobs, but we find the truth of God in Jesus Christ who loved us so much. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. We need truth. If we will heal as a nation, we must hear some of the bad things about our lives. We must hear that black lives do matter. We need that truth. We need to hear what women have gone through in this country. We need that truth. We need to understand that we need to open wide our hearts and our minds and our imagination about people who do not have our, our understanding of the world, who might come from a different orientation, who might be gay, who might be transe transsexual. We need to understand that everyone needs love, and the greatest truth that a Christian can have is that God loves us so completely that we ought to love each other. This country is suffering right now because it's unwilling to hear the truth. We have scores of people who think they need to take up long arms and guns because they want to enforce their version of the truth. There is no version of the truth. There is only one truth, and the great truth that Christians must evidence is that God loves us, and so we should love our sisters, we should love our brothers, we should love all people, we should love people who offend us. Every week I am challenged to muster up new levels of love for people who attack me. That's the calling of the Christian faith. To love those who despitefully use you, to love those who hurt you, because the truth is that all of us have hurt somebody, so we ought to forgive somebody. But Pontius Pilate asked this question almost like Aristotle or Socrates or Plato or Sartre or other great philosophers, he asks this question and we can see him walking along a tightrope of question and his own misgiving by asking, what is truth? Lies can become so plentiful that we lose sight of what the truth is. Distortion can become so normal Deception can become our lives that sometimes we need to look ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves, what is truth? And truth does not seek its own advantage. Truth does not seek its own way. It stands on the merit and fact that it is the truth all by itself. I've taken my mindset now in the world, in the world of politics, in the world of what is happening on November 3rd. I am no longer talking about the Postal Service. I am no longer talking about long lines. I am no longer talking about what the president did today or Mike Pence or whether or not he has his rally. My truth is that on November the 3rd, I am going to wake up so that I am the first person at my election place. If I've got to wait until Wednesday morning, I will stand there because my truth is that my ancestors fought so that I can vote. You can take away every post box in the world, but I am going to vote by hook or crook. You will not stop me because my truth is greater than your lie. Pontius Pilate asked, what is truth? The text goes on to say, with this he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. The same thing is true in society today. Stop worrying about the distortions that you see on Facebook. Turn it off, but not during our worship service. Turn it off so that you can understand that you have a deeper and more abiding truth. The reason many of us can't get to truth 
is because we let our culture get in the way. Look what it says. With this, he went out again to the Jews, gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. Pontius Pilate had no reason to be biased toward Jesus or biased against Jesus. He simply said, I find no ill in this man because even Pontius Pilate in the presence of Jesus Christ understood that he was the truth. But look at us. Many of us can't get to the truth because we let our culture and customs get in the way. Black folks, we ought to vote on November the 3rd like heaven and hell depend upon our ability to get to the polls. If you've got people in your house who have not registered to vote, wake them up, get them registered to vote, tell them that if they're going to live in your house and wear your sneakers and put their knees under your table, that they cannot let the culture of indecency and the culture of apathy to stand in the way and Pontius Pilate is fighting the culture of the Jews who had become so grisly and monstrous at this time. He says, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Sometimes we don't get to our truth because we let our culture get in the way. I know some political candidates today are not perfect, but they're better than some others. And don't let your culture of perfection that you hold over everybody else's head get in the way of you realizing the fullness of the dream that your ancestors had for you in this country. We must vote in a way that we have never voted before and cannot let our culture of apathy get in our way. And we've got to make sure we are involved in our community. This level of apathy in our community, the level of apathy in our churches, the level of apathy. Our schools might be old, but it does not mean children cannot learn in them. If there are big churches that are able to make mega buildings, then they ought to help to make mega schools. If people are hungry, we ought to be mega feeders. We ought to understand that God has blessed us, but we cannot allow our culture of just sitting back and watching to see what will happen because we will never achieve a truth in Jesus Christ. Truth and then culture. But then some of us are allowing our choices to get in our way. Some of us I make bad choices, but some of us make the worst choices. Here, the Jewish people are confronted with a very clear choice. Barabbas, who the text even says had taken part in an uprising. So remember now, this is not the first time of uprising that has ever happened. Jesus was born into a period of uprising. He died in a period of uprising. He ministered during a period of uprising. We see that there is an uprising, and that is a constant part of living, uprising. There is always tumult and tempestuousness in the world. But Jesus finds himself in the middle of this tumult, in the middle of this tempest, and it is important that when you are in the middle of a storm that you have the clarity of mind to make good choices. Most of us get in trouble not because somebody set us up. As a matter of fact, most people don't care about you enough to set you up. You don't matter enough to most people for them to set you up. What we do is we set ourselves up by our own choices. And in this text, the Jewish people are given two choices. Barabbas, son of the father, that's what Bar Abbas means, Bar Abba, son, Bar Abbas, father, son of the father. He looks like the part, 
He has been a rabble rouser. He has led an insurrection. He has led an uprising. He is associated with the party that Peter was part of that used to stab people with knives. He has been the exact problem in Jerusalem. He has been the problem for the people of Israel. But so often we get to the place where we are so intoxicated with our past realities that we continue to make bad choices. Or Jesus Christ who fed the multitude. Jesus Christ who healed the lame. Jesus Christ who gave sight to the blind. Jesus Christ who gave hearing to those who were deaf. Jesus Christ who resurrected the dead. Jesus Christ who met a little boy with fishes and loaves and fed the multitude. Jesus Christ who walked upon the waves and said, peace be still. Jesus Christ who plucked Peter and Thomas and John and others, Nathaniel, and brought them into, the, into his body and also sent them out along the way. And sometimes we are given such clear choices, but because of our culture and because we don't know how to trust God, we continue to make poor choices. I'd like you to think this morning about the choices you've made in your life, which have been deadly choices, even when you've known the difference, even when you've known the difference in your life between Barabbas and Jesus Christ, but have chosen Barabbas. I'm guilty of it. Is there anybody else who has been guilty of making bad choices, even when you know, knew the right answer? We have been so messed up in life that we make bad choices even when we know better. What is truth? Get to the root of what you know the truth is. The first truth which must be foundational for your life is an acknowledgement that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. That he's the only begotten son of the Father. That he who the Lord sets free is free indeed. Who describes himself, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, no woman cometh unto the Father but by me. He is the truth, and if you allow his truth to trump American culture, if you allow his truth to trump African-American traditions, if you allow his truth to trump whatever your own understanding is so that you don't lean upon your own understanding, but you trust him and acknowledge him in all of your ways, then you will make choices that are based upon his truth and not based upon failing failing and falling cultures. Some people would have me put a robe on and stand in the pulpit and make it feel like we're having church when we know the entire church has been closed down because they want the culture of what they think the church is to trump the truth of what Jesus Christ said, which is to go into all of the world. But I am making an intentional choice with my faith in the midst of this pandemic that it is only through a love of Jesus Christ and worshiping God the Father and loving my brothers and sisters irrespective of what I might do or what anybody else might do to me that I will not allow anything to stand between God and me. So this morning, you're faced with the truth. Barabbas, which looks like our own way and our own desires and our own wants. Or Jesus, who says, follow me. Take up your cross daily. Don't let your hand off the plow if you've started to follow me. Go ye therefore into all the world, preaching and teaching. What does that look like today? It means loving your political enemies, but beating the hell out of them at the, at the polls. Loving people, but doing what is right. Loving people, but standing up for justice. You've got a choice today. Either you'll choose Barabbas and go your own way, which is going to feel good, let the good times roll, or you'll follow Jesus Christ. 
I want to encourage you to follow Jesus Christ. If you've not given your life to God through Jesus Christ yet, you haven't even begun to live. So man, woman, boy, girl, if you're here today, why don't you give your life to Jesus Christ? As Lauren has already sung, we, we need thee. We need thee every hour. We had more music than we normally do, but it's the same old song for us. Except Jesus Christ, your life, your eternity will be absolutely changed and transformed. You'll be a new woman. You'll be a new man. You'll be a new creation. You won't always call everybody with a complaint before you say, good morning. How are you doing? You won't roll your eyes. What you'll do is you'll realize that he rolled away the stone. And you'll be a new creation. You'll be who he wants you to be. And you'll see his truth. And the smallness of our culture will fade away. And our choices will become even more profound. If you've discovered Jesus Christ this morning and felt the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, just send us a message on Facebook or if you're on the phone, just call the church office. Ask for Rosalind Cowan, and we'll be glad to bring you into the body of Salem Baptist Church. And it's not just about a church. It's about giving your life. If you never come to this church, but you give your life to Jesus Christ, you will know life and life eternally. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen. We thank you for tough sermons that even placed Pontius Pilate upon a tightrope of question by saying, what is truth? Teach us more profoundly, God, to give us your truth. Teach us patience forbearance, self-control, love, and forgiveness. And not just while people are watching, but when we are in our own private cloisters and nobody is watching, teach us to forgive others and pray for others. Pray for so many who will stand in the need of prayer. Pray for Dare to Imagine Church and Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church and Living Word Lutheran Church, Life Changing Word Church of God in Christ. Pray for brothers and sisters from all walks of life, all faiths, people who have no faith, because we know that that is the mission field. When we go into all of the world, we know you'll be there, God. Teach us to be loyal, to understand you're the truth, and to allow even parts of our culture to die, crucify even our personal cultures, so that we make wise choices and don't choose Barabbas, but choose Jesus Christ. Bless those who stand in the need of prayer. Touch Kevin Page, Deacon and Deaconess Page, Deacon Garrett Page, Deaconess Trish Page, Maggie, Gary, Lauren. Touch so many families in this church who stand in the need of prayer. Remind them that you are an awesome and powerful God so that nothing is too large for you because you are the truth. And in places, oh God, where we need work on us, crucify our flesh, crucify our anger, crucify our attitudes, crucify 
the toxins and poisons that we put out into the world make us new men and new women. We'll be so ever mindful to remind ourselves that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ who set the captive free and had the audacity and temerity to set us free as well. It is in his marvelous, matchless, and inimitable name that we pray. Amen. Lauren, it's always great having you here. Amen. Thank God for you. Thank we pray you for, for your students me. and for what you're doing. You're at Kappa. Amen. For Christian, you're back in school. Congratulations, brother, at NYU. Keep studying. Make us proud. Um, we expect great things. And you're doing great things already. And the church is empty. Let's, can, I, can I get a wide shot? Let me. <laughs> hello, y'all. Hello, hello. Where's that camera? There we go. Thank you, fellas. Good to have you guys here with us. Uh, it's, can, you pull, can you pull back and give us that center shot again? Give us that center shot. I think that's camera seven. I think that's camera seven. So we're still working out some of the kinks. There we go. The guy sitting there, Car Carlos has the bright shorts on. Uh, with the with the pink shirt on, he's not an AK, but he's dressed like an AK, AK today. Uh, I'm grateful for you. you can see the beauty of what's happening in the sanctuary. There are some beautiful screens. They're all 10 feet across. That allows for us to have great sight lines, um, great views rather, even when you don't have a great sight line from where you're seated. Uh, it is here to make church more reasonably beautiful uh, and uh, able to consume. Uh, the Word of God, the music, uh, prayers, and the Spirit of God. And so we have, God has given us a beautiful, beautiful sanctuary. There is not a more beautiful sanctuary anywhere around. I love being here. It can accommodate so many people, I think up to 1,400 people. And we will be back in here again. Don't get it twisted. God will always cleanse the temple he's cleansing his world and we'll be back here again make sure you come back and join us again next week this was a longer service for us almost 50 plus minutes that's all right we let the spirit of god move uh i'll probably start dressing again a little more appropriately as some of our our older members have said on sunday mornings for first sunday i'm all good with it uh because i know we've got to reach all kinds of people wherever they are Thank God for everybody here. God bless you. Go in peace. Truth, 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 truth. Make those choices. God bless you all. Thank God for you all. Thank you.